okay so what i'm going to do is now i'm going to share a few references uh, on the group i'll just put that in right away yeah i think all of these are ripples yeah so ripples are very um, like we've seen it all the time and we uh, have never it's one of those things that you see but you'd never really analyze you don't um, give it much thought until you have to like like me paint it and decide like oh how is how do how do you paint a ripple if you were to use a simple pencil to show a ripple and and i'm talking about um, showing a ripple on let's say suppose you're you're drawing something in only pen only any monoline tool um, what would you do to show a ripple? We'd usually show the concentric circles. And that's what it is. Ripples are basically concentric circles. But the view of a ripple is often sideways, meaning we often see a ripple from an angle, not from the top. Unless you're standing over the water body and looking at a ripple, in which case the ripple will be exactly, I mean, perfect circles, as perfect as uh, geometry will allow. So your ripple will look like, if you were to do it freehand, of course, freehand is never perfect, but you would actually see circles like this, going round and round and round. That's your ripple from the top, okay? It's not perfect for me, but you get the drift. There is a center point somewhere here where the ripple begins, where the object that uh, fell into the water cost, that caused the ripple falls. That's the center. And always the circles around it, concentric circles around it, um, are easy to draw when you look at it vertically. But that's not how we see a ripple most of the time. So what we are seeing most of the time is a side angle, looking at it from this angle, from one of the angles on the side. As a result, what happens is foreshortening happens. Foreshortening is something we are, again, very familiar with. Um, and that is a little trickier. Unlike this concentric circles here, now we are going to make what looks like concentric ovals because a circle at an angle, when it's foreshortened, it will be an oval. Um, I'll just do one thing. Huh? Let me just see. Is this recording? Yeah, it is recording. Okay. I'll spotlight my screen. Yeah. Perfect. One more thing I need to put is my display on 10 minutes so I can see my display. I have a neighbor on top who decides to do all sorts of um, drilling work at all the wrong times. So you're going to hear some drilling. Uh, what else do I need? Do not disturb. And that's it. Okay. So I've got these ripples. So when we are looking at it from the side, the same concentric circles are going to look oval, but ovals are not as easy to draw concentrically and they are not exactly concentric when we are seeing it from this. So the angle we are seeing it from is not, I see it's uh, what I mean by it's not exactly, let me show it to you. If I were to draw concept, concentric ovals from the top, as I'm drawing these circles, you're going to get ovals that look like this. This is your oval. And that's your oval. And that's your oval. Okay. Now, this is concentric ovals, but this is concentric ovals from the top. And this is not what we are seeing. What we are seeing is adjusted concentric ovals. So, your center is here. And then you have a, a very narrow portion on, the, on, this, on these ends, but the width goes up. Again, narrow here, but the width increases. So this has to be a little more flattened. Now our ovals are getting flatter. I'm just drawing this as an example. They are getting larger, but the fat, the this part of the oval is not getting that much thicker. You are not able to see it getting thicker and thicker, whereas the length is increasing. Right? So... This is the effect of seeing a ripple from the side. This. When I say concentric ovals, mm -hmm. 
this is not what we are talking about. This would be the correct definition of concentric ovals. What we are talking about is a slightly tilted oval. Okay. So when we are, pay, whatever illustration we do, whatever medium we do, this is important. We have to get this right. Because if you don't get this right, your ripple is not going to look very convincing. It will look like a ripple if you stare at it long enough, but it may not look convincing enough. So that is what you have to consider before we go into any more uh, of, an, of a study on ripples. The other thing is that we sometimes see the ripple itself without the object that caused the ripple. And sometimes we see it with the object, which is usually in many cases, in many photographs, it is a drop of liquid, whatever, water or otherwise. And sometimes it could be a stone, it could be all sorts of other things, right? So in this case, we are, I've taken a lot of examples that have a droplet going into the water. So you have to, you have the photo captured at a point where there is a droplet and there is the ripple. So something's already gone in and there is more falling in. So to capture this, you have to keep two things in mind. One is your study of um, uh, of the droplet, which you, which you know of before, earlier. That study has to be incorporated in the in the droplets and then there's the ripple which we will do separately okay one more thing i'd like you to observe and that I, maybe i'll take another photo i want to look at another photo mm -hmm. yeah this may be a good example this green ripple okay if you look at the green ripple uh how many colors can your eye distinguish in this picture okay how many, just, just look at the picture objectively. Now you're not looking at a ripple. Maybe you're looking just at this portion of your, hold on. You are, you are looking at just this portion. You do not, you cannot see anything else. Okay. If you don't know that this is a ripple, how do you, what, what colors do you see? You see a white for sure. Or what looks like a white. And then you see a darker shade of some shade, some color. Now, in this case, it is green. Sometimes it's blue, some blue, green, whatever. That is irrespective of that, okay? You are seeing usually a dark and a light, okay? Now, I'm opening up the whole image. You have dark, light, and the general color of whatever is the medium, okay? So, from my understanding of a lot of people's illustrations of ripples, Ripples do not need many colors to bring out the effect of a ripple when you're painting them, okay? So when you're painting them, stop. I mean, your mind is constantly telling you that it is a ripple, okay? It is a ripple. It is a ripple. It is water, okay? It is this medium. So draw it the way you understand this medium. That is not how you will do it eventually if you want to get these, this effect uh, perfectly. Because if you draw it, that way, you're going to get, um, and let me just show you one of my terrible ripples. Okay, it's not here. But what you're going to get is, you're going to keep drawing these lines with brush strokes. Trying to get more and more lines because you're seeing so many lines here. And you just want to keep adding more and more lines. What's going to happen is, it's going to look very uh, packed with lines. But in effect, it is not packed with lines. It's white. It's a medium tone of green and it is dark green. That's it. Yeah. Play with the dark and play with the light. And if you place them at the right places, your ripple will look perfect. Okay. So we'll probably start with this example. And so you don't need many colors for ripples. You need a, a mid-tone, mid whatever is your base color. In this case, we'll go with um, sap green. Okay. And to darken sap green, we will add a little bit of black to it. Now, it is because this is not a plant, I'm going to... Um, actually, let's not add black because I see shades of blue. Can you see shades of blue in between? Slight shades of blue, hues. So when I was looking at this picture, it said a mossy pond, ripple in a mossy pond. So obviously, the blue is the water. And the green is the reflection of all the moss around, under, all that. Okay. So maybe what we'll do is we'll darken this green, not with a black. Normally, I would have darkened it with a black. But today, we'll darken it with a blue. Okay. Maybe a, a um, ultramarine blue. 
So when we get our darkest shade of green, we are going to get it by mixing sap and ultramarine blue. The, the major part of the, of the water is going to be sap green and there are going to be sections which you leave white. Okay? Paper white. Now, how do you draw a ripple? Drawing a ripple is actually quite challenging. I started this off, this exercise off, and what is happening is I kept drawing line after line after line. So I drew this line, then I drew the green, then the one above. Now you can keep going, and then what happens? When you come to this side, it gets all confusing. Where does this circle end, and the next circle end, and the next circle end, and it's all a bit mushy out here. So what I would recommend is follow one color. So if you're going to follow the darkness, the dark colors, that is that means only the dark green, and maybe some parts of um, this green, only the greens. If you are only following the greens, draw the line concerning the green. So I'm going to start drawing all the lines that end the green. That means the bottom of this green. Let me just show you what that means. Do you see this green band here? This band of green? Okay. I'm going to draw the outline of that green. Okay. Just the outline of that green. So... Starting from the middle, I'm going to take this center portion. Let me put a drop in, just that part. It's an oval. This is to give you a base, a basis. Okay, where do I start? I need to start somewhere. Okay, so that's my central oval before the green has started. This is just the kind of bluish thing and over here, little green. On top of that, I'm going to draw the outline of the green that I see. See, I see a green like this. Then I have a drop over here. So let me leave a space for the drop. The drop is touching the water like this. And because of that, it has certain shades over here. So, can you see this? Okay. So, I'm going to, now on this side, there is a green that is already there. But, watch the green that comes from here. That green is this high. See? On the other side, it's almost like a green over here, blue over here. So let's just draw. And this does not have to be perfect. What has to be perfect is this end. It has to converge and become thin. So what we are seeing here is thickness over here more, but over here less. The angle we are watching, okay, is thickness more here and less here. After you have given yourself just this much of a basis, I would say don't complicate further. Don't, don't add more with pencil, okay, because it's going to become very complicated. There are lots and lots of green lines to do. Best thing now is to go in with the green and start putting the lines directly in paint. Okay, give yourself a basis. There's no harm. Give yourself a basis. Even in fact, if you want a few more drops, you can add in a few more drops here. I've got to put a drop here. I've got to put a drop here. A small drop here. I can stop with that. I don't want to put any more drops. Now, there is also a reflection of the drops, right? Coming in the, in the water. We are going to only draw the curves. So I have a curve here. Some curves. See, over here, a few curves. And then somewhere here, it, it shows the, it shows this reflected, right? The curve of the, of the drop that is touching. And on top of that is the drop. 
and that's it. Just a guideline. We'll be going over this in paint. So we have a rough guideline where the drop and where the drop's reflection are going to be. Okay. Now we'll start with the paint. I'm going to take my brush. Where's my brush? And let's start with directly with sap green. Sap green. I'm going to just mark a sap green somewhere here. All right. So this is my sap green. And with that sap green, now I'm going to be a little particular and a little careful because once I apply my green, it's going to be a little difficult to take it off. Okay. So if you do make a mistake, that's going to be a change you're making to the reference photo. So don't let that worry you too much. If it's, it's a change, it's a change. All right. So first one I want to definitely put is here. Now you'll ask me, this is a darker green. Why aren't we putting darker green? We'll go in with the darker green at the very end. First, let's put the green that's here. Sorry about that. Okay, so where was this? This was here. Okay. Here we had given ourselves a guide, so this is not difficult. Now the next set of things is going to be where you have to pay attention. So over here next to the drop, I have a small line, green line that goes all the way here and comes to here. That's it. Now here, I have a line that goes all the way here. That's it. Over here is white. And so I will go around the droplet and put in the green that I had marked. Okay, come to this end. Now see the way the green is curving. This is important. You have to get your curve right. So the green is curving in such a way that now see over this, I'm going with the next line. I have something here, or a little white here. I'm almost painting a negative, huh, by the way. Oops. Oops. Now the next big green mark for me is here, somewhere here. Right? Over here somewhere. Now let's go to the other side. The other side has to look cohesive with this. So I'm going to go in and put this dark patch here. And it turns nicely over here.
the white portion on this end I'm noticing has got these little dashes of green in it. And over here, only the tip of your brush, only the tip of your brush, because the green over here at the bottom is very, very thin. So just the tip of your brush, come and touch over here, touch over here. See, because we're playing more with white on this side. All right. The main ones to do are the big greens. After you've done the big greens, you know, the rest can fit in. That means it doesn't have to be exactly like your picture. Your picture doesn't have, it doesn't have to, no one's going to go and count the number of in between small rings you have. So what is important is to get the main rings in. Now I have got the first green, then the second green, and now I need one for the third green, which kind of coincides with this drop here. Right? So that green. What you need to figure out is how far does it come out? So by an estimation, it comes out like, see, look at the different distance. The distance from here to one, two, third ring, yeah, to here. And the distance from here mm -hmm. to here, it's quite big. Almost double of this. This is one, one, two. Yeah, almost double of this height is where you will go. So that means almost double of this, you will go all the way till here. Okay. It looks like it's too much, but don't worry because there are in between spaces. Okay. It looks a bit much. And then curve it inward. And this one will come somewhere here. At this point, just stop and see if your oval is looking reasonable. Any corrections you need to do, you will have to do at this point. Because if your oval doesn't look uh, correct, like, I mean, like, um, maybe concentric enough, this is where you will thicken it or um, maybe add a few more correction lines, those kind of things. Okay. Where does this oval go on the other side? On the other side, it it goes out here. Okay. Roughly the same width. Now, what is happening with the right-hand side is that your green is getting more and more. There are more and more shades of green. See, all the background greens are there. So, we need to put that in because on the left side, there's more uh, white. On the right side, there is more green. And we need to put those in. So for those, we will take like a wash consistency and start putting in. There is hardly any white on this side. So be generous with your brush. Let your brush be flattened. Okay. In fact, what we can do is we can mark out just the green such that the whites we want are in place. So here I know there's a green, here there's a white, here there's one more white that I have to maintain and one more white will be behind it over here. That's it. This is all the white that is there. Then there are some few bits of white over here between the green lines. See over here, little bit of white, little bit of white little bit of white. That's it. And the rest is all going to be green. See, you notice a little white here, somewhere here. That's it. Now the rest of it, we are going to just color it up green. Otherwise, we, will, we are not going to be able to see. Now put in those greens. Press your brush down. Use a bigger brush if you like. Only sap greener. Huh? And that's it. I'm just finishing off my image on the right side as much as I can. That's it. Since we're not making the whole picture, we're just going to show the end of the water somewhere here. 
leave it like our background washes you know where we end in somewhat So now the right side green is mostly done. What we have to continue is with the left side bottom. Left side bottom is also quite green. So let's get that last line in. That last line over here. Okay. Circle around the droplet that you were drawing. And that's it. All green after that. Give yourself that outline. That's it. Now we tackle the white portion at the corner. Which portion? I'm talking about this. There's hardly any green now. Now we have to be a little careful how we apply our greens. So we have to think. Our big green is done. Okay. Big green is done. How about we start adding these small curves? So, one, two, three, and these are becoming, this goes in. In fact, this part almost joins. Okay, then. few more green lines here. One is here. One is here. And one more. That's it. We will stop with that. Over here, we can't see what's happening. So I'm just shading it in with a mild green. That's it. I'm meaning mild green, meaning I'm not, uh, it's just like a wash consistency. I'm just finishing off my picture. That's it. Wash off your brush and almost. That's it. Leave it that way. You've got the structure of this uh, ripple now. Take that same uh, wet, um, you know, hardly any pigment wash. And just put a few lines over here to soften the white. Otherwise, it looks very stark. That's it. Okay, so we have got the bulk of our shape in, in place. Is your shape looking right now? Now, this is where you can decide you want to stop and see whether the shape looks right. Does your shape of a ripple look like look right? Anybody seeing anything? Yeah, you're way, 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 way ahead of us. So, at least I me. See. So, I'm just <laughs> carrying on trying to get my whites and the place. And I couldn't watch and do at the same time. So, I was looking at you. So, now yeah, I yeah, that's okay. down at how my you... face and see, see how it's going. I mean, I don't know how it's going, but it's going. Hold on. Let me spotlight it. Oh, it's not bad. It's quite good. Yeah, but it's quite yeah, good. I'm just struggling along trying to get the whites in the right place. And it gets so confusing because you miss out. The yes. Doing and exactly. So you have to keep exactly. it very exactly. close so, to you, you know, the reference image. The reference has photo absolutely has on your page next to it. Because if you keep yeah. it away, you, you miss out which one you're looking you at. Out. You can't really lift Correct. your hand. So, so yeah, this is still a, an example of Something that is very perfect. We are trying to get the ripple in its perfectness. Yeah. Okay. Now we'll, after this, we will be doing an example where we are doing it very loosely, where we are not going to stick to a reference. Reference is only your guide. Okay. Okay. So, this so is, then let's do this one. We yeah, are going to we'll do finish this, this off. Yeah. Yeah. We'll finish this off because then it will look like a really, uh, like, like, like a photographic, you know, like a photographic uh, example of a ripple. But after that, we'll, we'll, we'll do a loose ripple. Okay. Very, very freely. Okay, now that we have done this, Janita, you, yours is looking okay? Shape? Have you got that oval right? Let me see. Huh? Hold on. Okay. Place spotlight. 
Ah, okay, you've got the oval right. Oval is okay. Oval is fine. That's that's the crucial part. If you don't get the oval, that's what I'm saying. That the thereafter, whatever you add, you no, know, will not change the shape of your oval. You're working within the oval you've already drawn. So if this oval is not right, that's probably a time for you to try it again and get your oval right the first time. Okay, so once you've got this, the next step is basically going in with the details. So now I'm going to take a dark green. So the dark green is here, basically. <clears throat> I make sap green with uh, ultramarine blue, like I told you, to get a nice dark shade. So this is my shade. I don't know if it's visible. Okay, I'll just change my spotlight again. So my, this is uh, blue and green. Now I'm going to look at my reference and try and go in with the, wherever I see these dark, darker lines. So I see, I definitely see that dark here. Okay, and here, definitely all of this is dark. If you don't do it dark, it's not going to give the same effect. Okay, now I can put these little lines I see over here. See, I see some few lines here. Stuff that I had not put in the first time. Can you see what a difference the dark is making? The moment you add darkness, and it yeah. starts to... Oh, you can't see it? You can see it? No, no, no. I can, I can. I was just looking down so much that I can't see what you're doing. Let me spotlight you and watch, watch you instead. Yeah. Huh. Okay. So what I'm saying is I'm looking at the picture and I'm trying to see how much of this I can imitate in now dark. Only dark. Everywhere does not need dark. So I'm going to go in with dark over here. And definitely the first few ripples are dark. So I'm going to go in here with dark. Now I'm going over the green that I've already done already painted so it's going to be easier you're not putting down anything that you did not already paint what you are putting down for the first time are these small lines the little lines that that we did not put in with the light green see these lines that cross over those we had not put in so we are going to put those in and it's going to be dark on this side, the bubble, uh, sorry, the droplet, the shadow of the droplet is leaving a la dark green line. So I'm going to draw those in. Over here, some darkness. These are definitely dark. What else? What else is dark? Okay, here I am. Now the concentric circles are dark, but they're not very dark. They're just slightly dark. So let me go in and put just a layer of this. I am missing some lines. So there's some line here, line here, many little lines here. These will start to make your ripple look very real. My dark here, this was dark. Now all of this, this is, this is full of lines. Full of dark lines. And this is all estimate. Now, I'm not going into the picture, into so much of detail into the picture to see whether it's four lines or it's five lines. No, this is estimate. Okay. The ones facing you, the green is facing you right at this edge are the darkest greens you will find. After that, your what's going further out is not so dark. So now here, I definitely want to put in some dark here. See? Just lines. Free moving lines. Many of these lines touch each other. So keep that in mind. That when you're drawing lines, don't make them uh, independent lines. So try not to do... Try not to make lines like this. When you're making a ripple, your lines will not always be like this. Okay? This will not look, um, what shall we say, organic? Whereas if you do this, draw a line, 
draw another line. Let that line touch over here, another line here, another line here, another line here, and then put some in-between lines. See, touching. When you do this, it looks more realistic, right? So your lines at some point, not at the same point, have to touch each other. So one is touching here, one is touching here, one is touching here, and yet they're separate lines. So I have some lines here. This dark green can be extended to my water droplet. My droplet has got some reflection of green in it. And I'm going to try and capture that as well. While retaining the white of the drop. There's a lot of white. Now, under the drop over here, so many little, little blue li green lines. Put them in. Almost like the, you know, the a glass, um, a wine glass or something, reflecting colors that way. Same thing here. There's a slight outline to our, our drop. Now here on the on the green side, I see just a few lines coming in like this. Curve them in, and that's it. We'll stop. Now this itself will give you the impression of a droplet and the ripples that come with the droplet. Now what we have to do is wait for the green to dry and go in with the slight blue that we see because right now all our whites are looking completely white. Absolutely white. Okay. So we let this rest. And while this is resting, let's go to do some droplets that are loose, loose droplets. So we won't be doing any sort of exact counting. So which picture shall we do? This one? Susan, hang on. Just give us a little time to finish this, or at least me a little time. To sure, 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 sure. No, 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 absolutely. I can't go on to the next one. I'm just... Like... Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. Take your time. Take your time. This is actually an example where we are observing closely every single detail and drawing, trying, yeah. to, trying to mimic it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you, it is not... Um, it's not exactly fun art. No. It is serious art. It is... Totally serious art, which I will not do again. <laughs> For sure, unless I jolly well have to do something like that. But I would love to learn how to do just an impression of it rather than this. I mean, yeah. this is wonderful to do on a rainy day. But um, then you can really take your time over it. So then each ripple, if it's in the right place, it gives a beautiful effect, you know. Yeah, yeah, it looks very, very, yeah, looks very really lovely. Yeah, it's just that today in a rush, one can't do this. Just not possible. Hi, Susan. Yeah, so hi, Nita. Should I wait? I've just joined. So, should I wait for the next picture? Yeah, I think you can start directly with the next triple. So, I was talking, and I'll give you a little basis of what we did before. I mean, so you understand what. Uh, we're taking forward so we were talking about ripples today we're doing ripples water ripples yeah. you know yeah and uh, water ripples are uh, we all know they are concentric circles in yes. reality they are concentric circles but uh, and so concentric circles look like this they are almost in fact geometrically perfect but um, when we look at a ripple most of the time we do not look at it from from above we look above. at it from the side so yes. our over our rounds do not actually become rounds to our eye. Our eye sees it as ovals, concentric oh. ovals. But oh. even when you are saying concentric ovals, so our mind has this tendency to you know define everything. So now when I say concentric circle, it is drawing in its in your head. You are seeing circles. When I say concentric ovals, it will change the circle to oval, and you will start to see something like this. Yes. Okay, this is what the mind will tell you. Concentric ovals are. And it is correct. But yes. our ripples are not exactly like this. Right. 
instead our ripples are a little more like this where the concentric ovals are not very thick on this one end but they are widening evenly okay. on the other end okay mm. they are widening more than they are growing in height okay and this is a fee this is foreshortening this is the concept of foreshortening okay, okay. the eye is um, eye is unable to um, if you like take a three dimensional show depth to show depth or to see feel depth feel the depth here the eye yeah. just collapses those i mean the i we we see it only as lines or very close by lines but actually yes. this height here and this height here are the same right in in reality from the top these two are actually the same but on the side because we've seen it from the side okay. the top will appear thin and this side will also appear quite thin these two sides appear thin but these sides which are the same uh, length appear yeah. long and that okay. is what we have to take into our painting so whenever we are painting concentric ovals for our ripple it is not these concentric ones these. but no. these ones yeah no. where one side of the oval is like almost stacking itself one on top of the other very very closely but the yes. other end of the oval is widening evenly out yes okay so that is the consideration you must keep in mind before we start any ripple painting okay, okay. and keeping that in mind what we did is we took this reference photo we looked at um, this green one sorry this green one ha huh. ha huh. Yes. and we looked at this reference photo now now that we've understood the concept of these kind of uh, ovals uh, we looked at this photo and we tried to look at it from a sense of color okay how many colors do you see in this picture so basically what you see is a green and you see yes. a, a white, white and you see a dark green really dark green dark. okay and the ripples no. are a play of light yeah yeah you see a little blue here because we 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 were talking about that it is because of the medium or the water because of the water and some amount of the water's own color it's supposed to be a mossy pond so here in this case the water is reflecting mostly the moss and only yes. certain places do you see water for the sky reflection blue okay yeah. so we can i'm i'm for the moment ignoring that blue entirely because that's like a, something that we can add on just at the end yeah. but the main three colors that are forming the rings and the shape of the rings that we see here is the green and the white and the dark green okay yes. now keeping that in mind we drew these circles we first what i did is i drew a pencil marking for the center and okay. after that i did not draw any more much uh, more i was actually using the brush to elaborate and get the other rings which but which number here, have been using for this i have, have used uh, number 4 one of them let me see round brush it's a round brush yeah three size three um, round okay. brush okay so i don't uh, think the brush size will affect too much because the same brush i used for these portions as i did for these thin lines that you see Achoo. on the side okay no. same brush is just that i used only the tip the very tip to draw these lines these narrow lines and when i went to those portions which had to become thicker i pressed down on the brush so that you get those thick strokes okay now if you look at the picture your mind will keep on saying it's a ripple but you have to look at it as greens and whites what can you see as green and white okay so we essentially we added all these circles by just saying i'm going to draw in the greens okay i looked at the circle and i said okay i'm going to draw this green first then i'm going to draw the next green then i'm going to draw the next green okay and i stuck to the big ones the big greens don't mm -hmm. get mud don't get carried away by the small ones because the small ones will kind of as you start doing many of them <laughs> it will start changing the shape of your ripple you want to make sure the shape of your ripple doesn't get affected so for okay. that the big greens are what we drew first we painted in first then after we look step back and look at it and see whether the shape of the ripple is accurate yeah. then we go in with the dark green that's i think when you came in when we started oh. adding the dark dark greens. darker one yes yes yeah yeah, yeah. okay and now while the dark settles and before we add a little bit of blue uh, we'll go to a loose form of a ripple a very loose style okay and for the loose style we are not drawing anything in pencil good it's very simple you are going to take blue i'm going to take cerulean blue today now cerulean blue wash consistency nice and light 
okay nice and light and i'm going to use this like a pencil like how i did for statues i'm not sure if you remember but for statues how we said we would use it like a pencil it's going to give us the basic outline uh, which is a picture we said we'll do yeah this one so for that picture to keep your picture the side use your pen your brush sorry your brush forget the droplets now for now forget the droplets let's just look at the ripple okay and let's start with the bottom bottom ripple okay the bottom ripple is this way you draw an oval thicken it at the bottom okay this is wash consistency so it is not going to it's not going to look very dark. Then I'm going to go with the center ripple, which is thick on this side and thinner on this side. Okay. Does it look oval? Do both look oval enough? Now use your concept of what we did with the pencil marking first concentric circles, uh, so concentric ovals, and draw the thinness on the top and thicken it like this. That's it. Don't draw the full full circle. Continue that circle here and stop. Align again a thin line on top. Go outward more and draw another circle. Another oval. We are just trying to get the shape. Elaine, is this better? Just trying to get the shapes? Certainly, certainly. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, we go. Now, why am I always starting here? I'm starting here because if we start over here, okay, where it is easy, quite easy to do, just keep getting larger. When we come up, we intend to come as high on top. And that's not what we want, right? The hand will automatically go this high and we don't want to go this high. So I would recommend starting from the part which is thin. Start from there because that we want to control. And then if you are really not sure, you can even mark a spot over here and tell yourself, I have to come till this dot so that you get even sides. See, now I want to come up till this dot and I want to come up till this dot. Take your brush and swing it all the way around till here. Same way, extend this all the way around till here. And your oval will look quite accurate. Now the next part, now that we've drawn about four ripples, four uh, rings, let us try and complete the front side of the ring. The front side of the ring, you will notice, is slightly broader than the top of the ring. See, uh, front, when I say, sorry, not the front, the this bottom, this bottom portion of the rings are slightly wider than this. So keep that in mind, which means just draw a line, broken line. We are drawing broken lines here. Completing the ring. Broken lines. Rings should not be drawn as for perfect circles and full circles at all. I think the only ring you will find that way is the one that is closest to the center. That's the only one which will be unbroken. After that, everything should be broken at some point. Okay. And what I have noticed personally is that it's broken usually around the curves here in the front. The back line is very visible usually. Okay. Now we will add. I, I've, I've, I'm considering myself this far and I'm going to just add a wish, swish of a line over here to indicate the dark line. Okay. This way. Swishing it down like this. And with the brush on the other side, joining it like this. The one last blue I want to put is the, the darkest blue that we see over here. Press it down. Maybe even go back with a little more pigment if you like. Draw that line in. And that line completes itself on the other side over here. So basically, you have to get an imaginary oval. You're not drawing the whole oval. You're making that imaginary line. That's it. It's over here somewhere. That's it. Oh, 
Oh, this oval is complete. Sorry, sorry. I didn't see it complete. I was looking at a zoomed in picture. Somewhere here, we can start the next one. The next one goes over here, somewhere here. See, I'm, I'm doing an, it's an estimate, okay? My outermost string has reached here and somewhere here is the next oval. So I'm going to start here. And this is the next ripple. Thin on top, thick at the, at the base. It doesn't have any concentric ripples that you can see very clearly. So let's go to the outer ripple here. Thick over here. Then again, thins down. Here also thick slightly over here. And then it thins. Where it crosses the line, we are not going to, we are going to use dotted lines. Okay. One more ring on top. Start from this portion. Close by. It widens. Comes close again. Okay. So because it's wash consistency, we don't have to worry. If you have to go over any of these again, correct them. It's really not a problem. Now two rings that I managed to get. Now on top, I see many little ones. See, like this. One, two, three. I'm just leaving them as those lines. Over here, we have a nice deep one that comes here. Now we are kind of losing our circles. Okay. We are losing our circles because in the picture, they come till here and then they kind of disappear under this. Under this ripple. You can see one over here also coming from here and then it disappears. It comes out here, disappears. Thin lines are nice to put. Thin lines are the best. Now you can put in, fill in all the little lines. Little lines make the ripple really, really um, come alive. So I'm going to put a few thin lines here. Thin lines here. Thin broken lines. And these will be easier to draw because you've already placed the shape. You've got the shape right, right? So your thin is just doing consensus all over the place. See, I see some shades over here. I'm just trying to capture a few of these little shades. Just with a few strokes. Over here, some, some funny thing is happening because the rings are overlapping. Like this. Now I'm going to go in with cerulean blue again. But this time I'm going to put a dot of black into it. Little bit of black. What happens with that is I can start putting in. Now I'm going back to my first triple where <clears throat> I'm, I'm hoping this is dried. I'm going to put some detail on top of my existing one. I will put a layer of dark color. See, exactly on top of my blue. But where it gets thick, don't cover the whole blue with that. Where it gets thick, just put a sliver of the dark color. Don't put the whole thing in. My uh, the, the point of this, this thing is that it should sit on top of your light color. You get what I'm saying? The dark color is sitting on top of your light color. You can't color in all of the light with the dark because then you're simply replacing the light with the dark. You want the light to see be seen under the dark. So now your dark is going to have to be very, very thin and, and minimum. Okay? So this is how you make it minimum. Now here I definitely see another line here. And here there's so much of darkness. Which I had not put before. Right? So I want to put that in. 
Kamu sharing here. Few more lines here. I will drop in a little bit of dark over here in between and sometimes in the border. And when I'm doing these kind of things, I told you that we have to join, let our line, lines touch. Please do that touching exercise as well. Huh? See, I'm going to draw here and I'm going to draw one more curve here, but I'll make them touch at some point. See, like this. Similarly here and one more line here and let them touch. The touching is important. Center is where your dark is max up. Let me go to paint. Is this ripple um, easier to do, Ilan? I mean, actually, well, this is easier, but uh, it doesn't look as realistic. Yeah, it doesn't look as that's good as the other one. That's correct. for sure. I mean, this gets a little messy if you're not careful. Now, the other one, you're very careful. So yes. here, as you do it, what happens is sometimes it just spreads because it's not dry yet. You know, yes. those kind so, of things. One more. One more the reason why this will not look as realistic is because huh. the the color of the base is not being seen. That means your water <laughs> is blue. Yeah. And what we need is for the ripple to sit on something. Exactly. Right, right now, At this is become the, very isolated. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If the if the blue was there and then you could do it with white, you know, that would be another thing altogether, which obviously exactly. wouldn't look as nice. Yes, so we can add in a few uh, watery washes around. So if you do this, yeah, okay, and give yourself a few watery, very, very watery washes around, which are fully blue. Yeah. It will at least give you a sense of that, yeah. you know, the fact that this is water yep. on which the ripple sits. So these are very good learning observations because otherwise what happens is we end up seeing the item in isolation but not realizing that its quality its its yeah. um its um goodness comes from it sitting in a context so right. ripple on its own ah there Danica, let's see yeah let's see can't see anything nice Love. Janita very nice oh you put face how sweet <laughs> how see cute fish. Janita just shows the fish yeah, because I can't, it's so tiny, no? Yeah, oh, it's so cute. Very what nice cripples, my dear. I just did with a brush stroke. Very yeah. cute. No, it's very, very nice. Yeah. Now, what I would tell you to do is anything that you put on water should ideally be uh, distorted. Okay? So, next time you draw the fish, and it's a good idea, good thing that you drew it. If you draw anything on water, you have to draw it with some distortion, okay? So, for example, uh, especially if it's underwater. Now, fish is underwater, okay? Uh, similarly, I have seen pictures where you draw a leaf, a leaf floating, which is floating underwater, like it's under the water. Anything under the water will need to be a little distorted, okay? So, if I'm drawing a leaf, let's say, this is the shape of my leaf. I'm um, Usually, I would put, say, a leaf is like this. Okay, this is my rough shape of a leaf. I'm not drawing it in fully. But if I'm going to color this in yellow, remember to color it in with some squiggly lines like this. Okay, because of the water, the quality of water. 
okay the quality of the water is such in such is such a i mean i mean water in itself is such a medium where you cannot see everything entirely you will see some shine some light and a play of light and that has to show in the object that is in the water so this leaf down here i have to make sure that whatever i add to it the shape will remain but it will not be painted in whole getting it so your picture should look will look realistic only if your leaf looks like this okay same way with fish if you're drawing fish distort the fish's outline a bit so that you your fish looks like it's underwater otherwise it look like it's sitting on the water getting it but so a lot of people lines. and because of this one I Sorry, even what, what, little lines, I'll have to do it over it also. So to show it correct, exactly. Correct. Exactly. So I'll show you one more thing, okay? And this is not in the picture, but this is something that you should um, keep in mind. The difference between, I told you, you know, an object which is on top and an object which is under or the reflection of an object. See, here's a stick. Suppose I put a stick, a black line. Okay, I'm putting, assume that this is some kind of a stick that's going into the center of your... Now, this black line drawn the way it has been drawn will look like it is on top of your water. Correct? But its reflection will be drawn like this. Like we did the reflection of the drop in the earlier one. Correct. Know? Correct. <laughs> so, this makes it a reflection and that makes it on top of water. Okay? So, if I have a leaf which I want to draw on top of water, I would actually place it this way. I would put it on the on top, color it in, and that's my leaf sitting on top. But what you see below is its reflection. Yeah. So distortion of water is, I mean, of an object or the picture of an object that is underwater or its reflection in water is a, is a very, very important thing for the water to look convincing. Now, even another thing that they doesn't make this ripple as, as um, uh, what shall we say, as stand out as much as our first ripple is that the fact that it doesn't have as much variation in dark and light. Okay. That is another very, very key thing to keep in mind. So that is why it is important to see both. Otherwise, you will not understand how... How important uh, these Quite small right. things make. Quite right. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. Now we'll just go back to this one ripple because I wanted to add in a little blue. Like uh, yeah. Nita was saying, there is some blue in it and we should add that in because that's what makes the picture. Yeah. I'm going to keep this picture back here and take a little bit of ultramarine blue. Just a wash consistency. Now, unfortunately, my ultramarine blue has become so green. I dipped my green into it and it's become... Okay. Now, this is where I will add in my ultramarine blue. Gently, without disturbing any of the green around it. Challenge with watercolor is the Reactivation of paint. I have done this too many times. I mean, I've got this wrong too many times. Uh, the part where I go and I touch the water onto paint and expect that the paint will not move. So here I see a little bit of blue. A little bit here. Now we are simply putting in a few very gentle touches of blue. Not everywhere, just at the places where we see a slight hint of blue. And only one stroke, because the moment you apply more and more strokes, it's going to be activate the green. Just one stroke. Here. Now here I see the most of blue over here. Same way here, little bit on this, a little bit on the top of all these little bubbles. And here I put little blue, dry my brush and wipe off, wipe off the blue. 
A lot of people do this, by the way. They apply paint and then they pick it up. Okay. You may think, Are, you just applied it. Why did you pick it up? The effect of a stain is actually very, very lovely. Sometimes our wash, you know, getting too much of pig water into the pigment just to lighten it is not as effective as putting the pigment as it is and taking it off. So you have only put it down on paper for the paper to stain and then you picked it away. Right? Now the same blue, I also see a few bits of it here in this portion. So I'm just rubbing in literally um, dashes, just putting some few dashes here, there, that's it. And straight away, the stark white has changed. Okay. Now one last thing I will do, and this is just like an uh, wow fact at the end of whatever you are detailing. Take your detail brush, take black. I know I said only two colors and three colors, but if you take black and add in all these little, little bits. I'm taking black and I'm just applying black. At a few places. Done. That's it. I'm not going to overdo it. This part gets very, very easy to overdo. But that black no makes your bubbles, like your water droplets, sorry, not bubbles. Water droplets just, just jump out a little bit. Just a bit. You can't see it. Huh? If you do overdo it, it will start becoming very evident you use black. But here it is more like sitting on the green quietly. Susan, hmm. my this thing hasn't come out good. Let's uh, see, let's see. The blue, uh, I think it's ah. gij gij. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll tell you what, yours has become a little more concentric. Uh, so the view has become like like I told you, it's become a little more ovals have become a little more like this than than okay. like this. Okay? okay, that's why that's why it's but it's not looking wrong. It's not looking wrong. So like I said, if you look at the reference, ha, huh, this is actually quite nice. It's not bad. Now what has happened is also that it's looking more connected. It seems like you've made proper circles. So we huh. need more breaks. More breaks. Okay. Okay. Take another. Take your brush one more time and see if you can do um, lines like this, okay? Uh, what I mean is, draw your line like this, break, sufficient break, okay? okay. Not not a small break. I, I don't mean like, okay, draw till here and then start like this. No, huh. make, make a big, big break, okay? And that's just that much. So if you can make a few circles like this, where you are making breaks, and I'm going to draw another one. See, now over here, close by. And maybe the line can come where the break was for the previous one. Like this. And like this. Draw your next circle like this. Okay. Okay. Uh, it will start looking a little better. That's all. Right now, just because many circles have come. And what has happened is, again, you may not have drawn it actually all concentric. You oh, Sorry, all connected. You may have gone in a second time putting more lines and yes. that joined the circle. Yeah, <laughs> no, joined and, the circle. and it is looking very thickish also. It's not uh, yes. the <clears throat> So for that, um, the same brush, when you're using a brush, see, oh. um, I'm going to make a ring. See, try to make thin lines and the next one can be thick and then thin. And then this whole place can be thick. Now it's the same circle. I'm just drawing the same circle, but oh, sorry, um, but I'm drawing different thicknesses: thick here, thin here. See, so if you can learn to practice thick and thin lines on the same circle, 
you will get some some difference in your so it will it will look like a circle all right but it will not look all the same like you're talking about right now yours may be looking more like this okay it's yeah it's very thick yeah like this right and we want to get it looking more like this no actually when i did the second uh, the thicker the, the darker color it became you know, ha, kind of... ha. Yeah, yeah, I, I to... know. I have to so, do it. That may also have been because your darker color, was it put while the light was wet? Maybe, yeah. Ha. So uh, when you when you paint over something that is already already marked, um, I'm going to go in with a darker color. If you put it while it is wet, it is going to blend very much with the existing yeah. color. Whereas yeah. if you put it when it is um, a little like one drying has happened yeah, it will yeah. sit rather let's see if i put it here yes yes okay it will not blend yes. and it will sit on its own so yes. what will happen is here it will not look like one piece here it will look like one piece it i mean it's just become darker on the same color like a gradient okay yeah. and it will yeah. look like one piece. whereas here it is looking like two different things on the same even though the color is placed on the same color right so um those things add to the yeah add to the effect but um but generally one of two i mean two things that we should take away from here is one is the ambient color there has to be some color given to the the water around the ripple and without that the ripple alone will look very stark it will it will not have it will not have a context okay so it will just look like okay you drew a bunch of circles all around each other and then, then what right so for the context you need to have some background wash that's one thing. The other thing is that you have to have light and dark. Shades have to be there. I can't hear the contrast. Oh, can't hear me. Am yeah, I audible? The spotlight also, I think it's. Yes, that's probably one. Yeah, let me just. Uh... Yeah. yeah, sorry. Yeah. So, what I was saying was. This ripple and this ripple, the difference is that I did not bring out much contrast. I should have brought out more contrast. If I brought out more contrast, this would look more real. The, but the contrast would be lost if I did not put the background ambient blue, which I have also not put enough. I should have put more blue around, right? So more blue and more contrast, dark blue, would have made a world of a difference to this lip, ripple. But we have achieved that more or less here. We have achieved that more or less here. And that is why this is looking more realistic. Like, oh, yeah, okay. This looks like a ripple that I would imagine it to be, right? So two things that you have to consider next time you're drawing ripples or you're practicing ripples, that the ambient color, the color around, and uh, the extremely dark shadows, those, okay? Because if you put the dark, then it shows that there's significant light falling on the ripple, on the water, okay? And with these white, extreme whites that you see, sometimes, by the way, I, when I when I was first doing a ripple, this is what I should show this to you because everybody would have done it, started their own ripples this way. Okay, I'm going to show you how I started my ripples this way. Okay, okay. I, I went about it. Okay, I, I did this. I did a lot of this. This kind of stuff. Uh, what happened with this is, after some time, I decided, oh, my light and light parts are not not clear enough. So I went in. I did this. Okay. I think I then did I went this. in. Yeah. Yeah. I did this, and then after that, I realized, oh, you know what? I want some more dark. So I went in, put some more dark. After a while, my whole ripple became like a puddle. Okay. There was nothing on it that showed light falling. Nothing. The white spaces were fully gone, fully, entirely gone because I had already done so many brush strokes. Okay. Now, even in a situation like this, you can make some corrections. But what you will have to do is you will have to superimpose white because the white has been taken away. Okay. You have not put any white here. So what we were doing in this exercise, we were keeping the white places absolutely white consciously. But when we are doing it loosely, this is bound to happen. Right. We are not making space for the white enough adequately. So what I did then, you take a white marker, like a actual jelly jelly roll pen, 
like this or you can take simply white poster color okay white poster color is an opaque medium this is where you can still the, my, my whole point is this is not a lost painting it is not lost and because we can put something on top of it but it is not watercolor because watercolor is transparent Susan, this one is lost now i can't do much to it now because sure, let me see the, the one that we showed me no yeah so i mean i yeah can i add more or should i just leave it darker color no, should no. i add darker color to you create? can add no no on this itself I would say add a little more darkness, okay? But before, wait, wait. You should probably add more, more blue, light blue, light blue first. Let the light blue dry, okay? And leave only a few patches of white. My point is right now, there are still lots of white spaces in the entire yes. concentric circles. Yes. Remove that one, okay? So now leave only now, if your picture is looking uh, somewhat like this, what I'm trying to say is you can um, see. Uh, leave only this section here white. Okay. Everything else you color in light blue. Okay. Now inside this ring, what I have done is I have left only this white. Now in the next ring, I'm going to leave again some white, but only Spot at the same kind of portion. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. My mistake. Yeah, sorry. So again, in the next ring, I'm going to color in mostly light blue and I'm going to leave a sliver of white on this side. In the next ring, I will do a similar thing. I will color in all light blue, but I will leave a sliver of white over here. Now you're starting to see white left behind only on one side. Okay, now let this dry, fully dry. Then go in with your dark color and put all the in-between rings that you want to show shade, but don't touch your white. You get what I'm saying? Right now, what is happening with yours is there's a lot of white in general. Even mine, for that matter. has a lot of white around it. Okay? We want to get only the white on certain portions. So, let's okay. cover up the remaining area completely with a wash of blue. Wash of blue. And a wash of blue full all over the place will start to make your white stand out. See? I'm putting a wash of blue and straight away my white stands out on that side. So now I have more white on this side and less less white on this. In fact, no white on this. Okay. That kind of an adjustment will still get your ripple back. Okay. Let this dry and then go in with a dark shade. Okay. okay? So try it out. Try it out. It's not all lost. Yeah. Now I want to show this, this part. I hope this is dried. If this is not dried, my white is just going to blend in royally. I'm going in with white poster color or gouache, whatever works for you. And put a highlight here. See? Bring your white in from an alternate source. So now if I put this white here and I put some white here, the shine will come back. Okay? So you can bring it back if you have lost it. But if you plan it, then the paper white itself will work wonders. Okay? So don't don't think that it's all lost in with with uh, watercolor. Everything is not lost because there are certain mediums that you can superimpose on watercolor. Okay. All right. So I would recommend that we definitely <clears throat> try more ripples, and maybe maybe the best thing to do would be not to do water droplets and ripples at the same time. Do only ripples. Focus on one thing. Okay, because now this became a little complicated with the water droplet and everything there. Focus on one thing and try yeah. uh, identifying the colors. Yeah, but you know, Aditi when taught it, us the water droplet. So luckily, ah. that was like not a mystery at least. Yeah, it yes, was yes. a lot of detail, but it, it came out quite nice. In fact, the other one is yes, not yes. so well because we don't even have a drop falling in. But then yeah, it I know, I know. without a drop, but that's fine. I think this is a... The yeah, I mean, I, I know I said I'd never do it again. That was just because it was so much work. But it is <laughs> one, it's a wonderful exercise to sit and do with great concentration. Yes. Right? Super. It is, it is. Yeah. It's actually so, very satisfying. Elaine. Yes. Um, yes. I, I, I put up a picture of mine. Know? Yeah. I put up a picture of mine on the group. So, ah, okay. So sweetly, Aditi said, wow. But yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so this is I, I tried this similar thing yesterday and uh, I was, I was figuring out the same way. Very yeah, it is, but it is the contrast feeling. Without yes. that contrast, no, you would not get this feeling. Yes, and your drops are also wonderful. Yeah, but again, the drops, see the white. I had to, by the way, this is superimposed white. This yes, is not white. That, is... Even mine, I've lost a lot of white. I'll have to superimpose it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So superimposed white will not look bad at all. Uh, yeah. It's just that you know you have put white. Somebody else will not know it. You not know that all. you have put white. Yes. Yeah. Whereas over here, I know fully well I've not put any white. <laughs> so I'm more satisfied with this <laughs> because I know that I made the effort to get paper white there and yeah, planned yeah. my white. Way. And so it is a win for me that way. Nothing else. Absolutely. Nothing else. Absolutely. In the end, that is that is the that's the whole thing. Yeah. So nice. um, but uh, but you know what? You're talking about um, the same kind of let me see, where did I do it? But, uh, know. you know, the reflection of the leaf, I need to, yeah, learn how to do this, this nicely, you know, uh, of drawing something on top and then uh, doing a reflection in water is another. Reflections are very nice. They are an another exercise class. in itself. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like another class. If you're doing water, then do reflections. Nice water reflections. Because then yes, that makes yes. it quite complete because then you really can compose some water thing. Yeah. Even the placement yeah. we feel is important. Like yes, it, that's the, the thing. way it is supposed to be. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, Janita. That is it. How to play to put the placement of the reflection to make it sound real, uh, look real, you know? Yeah, look real, look real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of people go wrong in the fact that they don't give enough value to the reflection. They say that, okay, my picture on top is correct. Okay, like maybe I'm drawing a a flag okay i'm drawing a flag sitting above water and i take all the effort to draw the flag nicely proportionately all that but when i go into the reflection i just simply make a line and yeah, then just and some, some yeah random, random scribble okay because yeah. it's all wavy right so what does it matter that is not how you should be you should have you know that concept of mirror reflection how far does your reflection come sometimes some people will have a whole stump here and the reflection will be only this much you know, so proportion also matters. Proportion also matters. So uh, if those who do these studies of, um, you know, buildings, oh, those are most challenging. Imagine a colorful building against a water, water, you know, uh, against uh, water, uh, sitting next to water. Imagine putting that color into blue. Yes. Very, Milen very does it challenging. All the time he is doing it. All Milen. the time he does it. Yeah, exactly. It's so, but it's the science of its own. I think, though I seem to be putting my neck in it, but it would be nice to learn that. Yeah, yeah, it is. So, how do you put the pink down? So, he actually puts the pink down first. So, if the building is pink, if the building is red, all that, he actually puts that down first before he goes over the with water strokes. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Maybe we can ask yeah. Adit to do it or if you do it, Susan. Yeah. In oh, fact, if she okay. yeah, if she's continuing next class, uh, I don't With know, water. it's part of that. Yeah, that'll be yeah. nice. I'll be I'll reflection in water. Yeah. Yes. yes. Reflection in water is excellent. Excellent. Yes. Buildings, books, water bodies, like plants, everything. Yeah. So if you're doing reflection. water this time, I think it'll be nice to ask her to do that. To do, yeah, to do that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So that's uh, that's that's something to look for. I should tell her to do it with us also because that's yes. what she does. I used to love doing the boats. Yeah, my boats are very challenging. Boats are very challenging. That's the right. shape of the boat only is challenging, and then yes. of course reflection is a different thing altogether. Yes, yes, but uh, but it's fun, huh? All of it is fun. She's done some yes. very pretty boats with us before, yes. and they are very they are all challenging. See, Elaine, actually, to be honest. If you learn all of them, no, they each one is challenging the first time yes. because you have to think. Yes. To think. But yes. as you do more, now ripples also, as you do more yes. ripples, the the no, the, the, the mystery is demystified, you know? Yeah. It's demystified. Yeah, it's been demystified. Now it is just a question of your skill. Your yes. skill to apply that demystified bit onto paper. Totally. totally. That's mm -hmm. it. That's it. So it, you will get it, you'll get it. Yeah, I think um, reflections and boats are wonderful for the rest of the month. 
yeah do that do that she was asking me do water i was like how much more of water can we do <laughs> can we now we know do? now we know yeah. because this one puddle <laughs> Yeah. So these are good instant alarms. Yeah, in the reference one that you've given, uh, uh, huh. Susan, uh, yeah. this dark one. Second, I'll just get back to the reference one. This third one, I think, just before this one that we did, it this is one? with the gold. Yeah, with yeah. the gold. And there's and there's hardly any ripples here. There's correct, there's correct. Three. That's it. Just three, and the rest is this very exact. Shape on top of that, and a thick uh, edge to this inside ripple. Yes. It's like almost a box. Yeah, a box of and black. Yet, yeah, <laughs> and it yet it looks like you know amazingly watery. Yeah, I feel if yep. I do that, it look like a solid little box sitting on water. <laughs> because the shading on the no, side. But if you look at so but if you look at this image, you know, Elaine, that's what you're saying. You're saying that because you are looking at your painting for a prolonged period of time and seeing the box. Okay. Ah, right, now, if right. you look at this picture long enough. Yes. And look at it and say, oh, that's a big bit of black. Then you start seeing the box there also. Yes, yes. Yes. Certainly. You know, you'll start seeing that big patch of black. Oh, it's just too much of black. Yeah. So, yeah. The thing with our reference photos is we look at our reference photos very briefly. And we look at our painting for prolonged periods of time. So for that is why I'm saying when you look at your, you give your eye a rest, ah. it is able to see your painting in a different light. Ah, you see, I... so a lot of people will say say to you, oh, that is not looking, I mean, I mean, you are saying to that person rather, that doesn't look like a drop leg. It looks like a big, big, big band of black. But the person is like, oh, this is so realistic. This is just like a drop because they've just seen it. They've yeah. just seen it. They've not yeah. had enough time to dwell on it and see the black. I think you in spend this two one, hours looking yes, back. you're right. You're right. In this one, I think uh, it would be a great deal of blending of your colors. Which is yes, a, yes, because yes, yes, there would know, be some amount of it's yeah. all this flawless blending of uh, colors, yes. which is another which would be better on watercolor color. paper. If you're yes. doing it on watercolor because paper, you'll get it. I find better. it very hard on this. Nothing, I mean, my blending is so hopeless. Uh -huh. I get <laughs> cloudy, cloudy bits or then lines, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I know fully well. This this is a, this is what happens when I do on this paper. <laughs> Yeah. And I have learned to now enjoy it. Now yeah. appreciate well, what it. To do. <laughs> I've learned to love it now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's bound to happen. See, look at this. It's always, always yeah. so... Always jagged. some cloudy thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Not perfect, yeah. And then you do it in watercolor paper. And it's so pretty. So, okay. uh, but it's okay. You have to learn to love it. Yes, yes. <laughs> As she says, you do the hard stuff first. Then afterwards, things will be easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, um, if maybe yes. next year week you are doing um uh, reflection, we'll I look forward to that in Friday class. Yes, uh, Saturday I, class. I will, yes, I asked Aditi here only in our group. Yeah. Can we do sounds good. Yeah. Be lovely. All right. Otherwise, how are you ladies doing? All well? All well. You tell us your news. No, nothing. No news. I'm just relieved to have passed on to Aditi. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Back to her. I'm but like, uh, there you glad go. Once in a while you come and uh, do a class. Yeah, yeah. Just... Today she had to. Un... <laughs> so she, she said that to me. She said, once in a while I need your help. And then I think two days after that, she's like, uh, can you take Tuesday class? <laughs> <laughs> you said once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Good, good. Good. It was most the children funny, have yeah, all the illnesses. Everybody is yes, okay. yes, yes. all raring to go, wading through water to get to school. Most excited, everyone except me. For them, I do. I took them piggyback the other day, uh, two days back. It got waterlogged, and it was just yeah. our building, nowhere else. So you're you're not going to have schools um, saying uh, no school because your building got waterlogged. So <laughs> I had to basically take them out and I took them piggyback, not the oldest, the second and the third. And they were so excited. They were so happy. <laughs> I'm like, again, Mama, again, tomorrow. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not wading through dirty water for you too. <laughs> but what fun. Yeah. A jolly good ride. Stop training now or how is it there? 
Sorry. Yeah, no, no. It's everything's all right. Everything's all right. It was just that day when it rained like all morning, no? Uh, no, but it's night still morning, early today, na, Susan. Still it is rainy, but it, there's no flooding. No flooding. Oh. It is rainy. Rainy we have accepted. Yeah. That is okay. But the flooding was terrible for me because I had to wade through that muck. And uh, these kids were having a jolly good time on my back and uh, wanted me to repeat the same thing. Did you take me to school? <laughs> I went through the water. I was like, it's not... It is, you think it's fun. <laughs> I can see the dead rat floating around, okay? And I came home and scrubbed my leg royally. <laughs> so, it's, no, we are not doing that again. How oh, sad. So that's how it was. <laughs> oh, but fun. anyway... Yeah, that's that's life with the kids. <laughs> Very good, cute. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll meet you all next time. Aditi is out, and uh, catch you all. Okay? Yeah, and I'll catch you. Luckily, on Friday class. On Friday, yes, Friday class. Okay, bye bye. All right, thank you. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.